The Bronze Age is the second principal period of the three-age stone bronze iron system, as proposed in modern times by Christian Jurgensen Thomson, for classifying and studying ancient societies. An ancient civilization is defined to be in the Bronze Age, either by smelting its own copper and alloying with tin, or by trading for bronze from production areas elsewhere. Copper tin ores are rare, as reflected in the fact that there were no tin bronzes in Western Asia before trading in bronze began in the 3rd millennium BC. Worldwide, the Bronze Age generally followed the Neolithic period, but in some parts of the world, the Copper Age served as a transition from the Neolithic to the Bronze Age. Although the Iron Age generally followed the Bronze Age, in some areas, the Iron Age intruded directly on the Neolithic from outside the region, with the exception of Sub-Saharan Africa, where it was developed independently. History The overall period is characterized by the full adoption of bronze in many regions. Though the place and time of the introduction and development of bronze technology was not universally synchronous. Man-made tin bronze technology requires set production techniques. Tin must be mined, mainly, as the tin or to write, and smelted separately, then added to molten copper to make bronze alloy. The Bronze Age was a time of extensive use of metals and of developing trade networks, seed and sources, and trade in ancient times. Near East. The Bronze Age and the ancient Near East began with the rise of Sumer in the 4th millennium BC. Cultures in the ancient Near East, often called the Cradle of Civilization practiced intensive year-round agriculture, developed a writing system, invented the potter's wheel, created a centralized government, law codes and empires, and introduced social stratification, slavery, and organized warfare. Societies in the region laid the foundations for astronomy and mathematics. Near East Timeline Dates are approximate. Consult particular article for details. Age Subdivisions The ancient Near East Bronze Age can be divided as follows. Near East Bronze Age Divisions The archetypal Bronze Age divisions of the Near East have a well-established triadic clearness of expression. The period dates and phases below are solely applicable to the Near East, and thus not applicable universally. Early Bronze Age, Ebba 3320-100 BCE 3300-3000, Ebba I 3027-100, Ebba II 2700-2200, Ebba III 2200-2100, Ebba IV Middle Bronze Age, MBA also, Intermediate Bronze Age, IBA. 2100-1550 BCE. 2100-2000, MBAI. 2017-150, MBA 2A. 1750-1650, MBA 2B. 1650-1550, MBA 2C. Late Bronze Age, LBA. 1550-1200 BCE 1550-1400 LBAI 1400-1300 LBA 2A 1300-1200 LBA 2B Bronze Age Collapse Mesopotamia Ancient Mesopotamia In Mesopotamia, the Mesopotamia Bronze Age began about 2900 BC and ended with the Kassite period. The usual tripartite division into Annerly, Middle, and Late Bronze Age is not used. Instead, a division primarily based on art historical and historical characteristics is more common. The cities of the ancient Near East house several tens of thousands of people. Ur in the Middle Bronze Age and Babylon, in the Late Bronze Age similarly had large populations. The earliest mention of Babylonia appears on a tablet from the reign of Sargon of Akkad, in the 23rd century BC. The Amorite dynasty established the city-state of Babylon, in the 19th century BC. Over 100 years later, it briefly took over the other city-states, and formed the first Babylonian Empire, during what is also called the Old Babylonian Period. Babylonia adopted the written Semitic Akkadian language for official use. By that time, the Sumerian language was no longer spoken, but was still in religious use.
the Akkadian and Sumerian traditions played a major role in later Babylonian culture, and the region, even under outside rule, remained an important cultural center throughout the Bronze and Early Iron Age. Iranian Plateau Persian Bronze Age Late 3rd millennium BC Silver Cup from Moravdisht, Fars, with linear Elamite inscription. Elam was an ancient civilization located to the east of Mesopotamia. In the Old Elamite period, Middle Bronze Age, Elam consisted of kingdoms on the Iranian plateau, centered in Anshan, and from the mid-2nd millennium BC, it was centered in Susa, in the Khuzestan lowlands. Its culture played a crucial role in the Gudian Empire, and especially during the Achaemenid dynasty, that succeeded it. The Oxus civilization was a Bronze Age Central Asian culture dated to ca. 2300-1700 BC, and centered on the Upper Amud area, Oxus. In the early Bronze Age the culture of the Kopetago Aces and Alton Depi developed a proto-urban society. This corresponds to level 4 at Namazga Depi. Alton Depi was a major center even then. Pottery was wheel-turned. Grapes were grown. The height of this urban development was reached in the Middle Bronze Age c. 2300 BC, corresponding to level V at Namazga Depi. This Bronze Age culture is called the Bactrium Archeana Archaeological Complex, BMAC. The Cooley culture, similar to those of the Indus Valley civilization, was located in southern Balochistan, Gadrosia, ca. 2500-2000 BC. Agriculture was the economical base of this people. At several places dams were found, providing evidence for a highly developed water management system. Conar Sandal is associated with the hypothesized Jireef culture 3rd millennium BC culture postulated on the basis of a collection of artifacts confiscated in 2001. Anatolia The Hittite Empire was established in Hattusa, in northern Anatolia, from the 18th century BC. In the 14th century BC, the Hittite kingdom was at its height, encompassing central Anatolia, southwestern Syria as far as Ugarit, and upper Mesopotamia. After 1180 BC, amid general turmoil in the Levant associated with the sudden arrival of the Sea Peoples, the kingdom disintegrated into several independent Neo-Hittite city-states, some of which survived until as late as the 8th century BC. Arzawa in western Anatolia during the second half of the second millennium BC likely extended along southern Anatolia, in a belt that reaches from near the Turkish Lakes region to the Aegean coast. Arzawa was the western neighbor sometimes a rival and sometimes a vassal of the Middle and New Hittite kingdoms. The Asua League was a confederation of states in western Anatolia that was defeated by the Hittites under Anarlir Tudalayai around 1400 BC. Arzawa has been associated with a much more obscure Asuwa generally located to its north. It probably bordered it, and may even be an alternative term for it, at least during some periods. Levant Mediterranean Bronze Age Chalcolithic Copper Mine in Timna Valley, Negev Desert, Israel Ebla was at its height from ca. 1850 to 1600 BC. The first known ruler of Ebla in this period was Megam, Anansi, governor, four or three during the reign of Amar Sinavar. Ibitlim was the first attested king. Ebla is mentioned in texts from Alilak from ca. 1750 BC. The city was destroyed again in the turbulent period of 1650-1600 BC by a Hittite king, Mersilii, or Hattusilii. This is attested to only by the fragmentary Hara Hittite Song of Release. Amorite kingdoms, ca. 2600 BC, arose in Mari, Yamkud, Kwatna, Assyria, Ezen, Larsa, and also Babylon. This era ended in northern Mesopotamia, with the expulsion of the Amorite dominated Babylonians from Assyria by King Adasi c. 1720 BC, and in the south with the Hittites Ak of Babylon. C. 1595 BC, which brought new ethnic groups, particularly Kassites, to the forefront in southern Mesopotamia. From the 15th century BC onward, the term Amaru is usually applied to the region extending north of Canaan as far as Kadesh on the Orontes. 
the Mitanni was a loosely organized state in northern Syria and southeast Anatolia from CA 1500 BC 1300 BC. Founded by an Indo Aryan ruling class that governed a predominantly Hurrian population, Mitanni came to be a regional power after the Hittite destruction of Kassite Babylon created a power vacuum in Mesopotamia. At its beginning, Mitanni's major rival was Egypt, under the Thutmesids. However, with the ascent of the Hittite Empire, Mitanni and Egypt made an alliance to protect their mutual interests from the threat of Hittite domination. At the height of its power, during the 14th century BC, it had outposts centered on its capital, Washakani, which archaeologists have located on the headwaters of the Kaaba River. Eventually, Mitanni succumbed to Hittite and later Assyrian attacks, and was reduced to a province of the Middle Assyrian Empire. The earliest known Ugaritic contact with Egypt, and the first exact dating of Ugaritic civilization, comes from a Carnelian bead identified with the Middle Kingdom pharaoh Cenus Red I, 1971 BC-1926 BC. A stella and a statuette from the Egyptian pharaohs Cenus Red III and Amenemhet III have also been found. However, it is unclear at what time these monuments got to Ugarit. Amar now letters clarification needed from Ugarit CA 1350 BC records one letter each from Amitam Rai, Nimiju II, and his queen. From the 16th to the 13th century BC Ugarit remained in constant touch with Egypt and Cyprus, named Alashia. The Arameans are a northwest Semitic semi-nomadic and pastoralist people who originated in what is now modern Syria, Biblical Aram, during the Late Bronze Age and the Iron Age. Large groups migrated to Mesopotamia, where they intermingled with the native Akkadian, Assyrian, and Babylonian population. The Arameans never had a unified empire, they were divided into independent kingdoms all across the Near East. After the Bronze Age collapse, their political influence was confined to a number of Syro-Hittite states, which were entirely absorbed into the Neo-Assyrian Empire by the 8th century BC. Further information, Canaan. Prehistory of the Southern Levant and List of Archaeological Periods, Levant. Ancient Egypt. Early Bronze Dynasties. In Ancient Egypt, the Bronze Age begins in the Proto-Dynastic Period, c. 3150 BC. The Archaic Early Bronze Age of Egypt, known as the Early Dynastic Period of Egypt, immediately follows the unification of Lower and Upper Egypt, c. 3100 BC. It is generally taken to include the First and Second Dynasties, lasting from the Proto-Dynastic Period of Egypt until about 2686 BC, or the beginning of the Old Kingdom. With the First Dynasty, the capital moved from Abydos to Memphis with a unified Egypt ruled by an Egyptian god-king. Abydos remained the major holy land in the south. The hallmarks of ancient Egyptian civilization, such as art, architecture, and many aspects of religion, took shape during the early dynastic period. Memphis in the early Bronze Age was the largest city of the time. The Old Kingdom of the Regional Bronze Age is the name given to the period in the 3rd millennium BC, when Egypt attained its first continuous peak of civilization in complexity and achievement the first of three kingdom periods, which mark the high points of civilization, in the Lower Nile Valley, the others being Middle Kingdom, and the New Kingdom. The first intermediate period of Egypt, often described as a dark period in ancient Egyptian history spanned about 100 years after the end of the Old Kingdom, from about 2181 to 2055 BC. Very little monumental evidence survives from this period, especially from the early part of it. The first intermediate period was a dynamic time, when rule of Egypt was roughly divided between two competing power bases, Heracleopolis in Lower Egypt and Thebes in Upper Egypt. These two kingdoms would eventually come into conflict, with the Theban kings conquering the north, resulting in reunification of Egypt under a single ruler during the second part of the 11th dynasty. Middle Bronze Dynasties The Middle Kingdom of Egypt lasted from 2055 to 1650 BC. During this period, the Osiris funerary cult rose to dominate Egyptian popular religion. The period comprises two phases 
the 11th dynasty, which ruled from Thebes, and the 12th and 13th dynasty centered on El Lisht. The unified kingdom was previously considered to comprise the 11th and 12th dynasties, but historians now at least partially consider the 13th dynasty to belong to the Middle Kingdom. During the Second Intermediate Period, ancient Egypt fell into disarray for a second time, between the end of the Middle Kingdom and the start of the New Kingdom. It is best known for the Hyksos, whose reign comprised the 15th and 16th dynasties. The Hyksos first appeared in Egypt, during the 11th dynasty, began their climb to power in the 13th dynasty, and emerged from the Second Intermediate Period in control of Avaris and the Delta. By the 15th dynasty, they ruled Lower Egypt, and they were expelled at the end of the 17th dynasty. Late Bronze Dynasties The New Kingdom of Egypt, also referred to as the Egyptian Empire, lasted from the 16th to the 11th century BC. The New Kingdom followed the Second Intermediate Period, and was succeeded by the Third Intermediate Period. It was Egypt's most prosperous time, and marked the peak of Egypt's power. The later New Kingdom, i.e. the 19th and 20th dynasties, 1290-1069 BC, is also known as the Ramesside period, after the 11 pharaohs, that took the name of Rameses. Central Asia Cymatribino Phenomenon The Altai Mountains in what is now southern Russia and central Mongolia have been identified as the point of origin of a cultural enigma termed the Cymatribino Phenomenon. It is conjectured that changes in climate in this region around 2000 BC and the ensuing ecological, economic and political changes triggered a rapid and massive migration westward into northeast Europe, eastward into China, and southward into Vietnam and Thailand, across a frontier of some 4,000 miles. This migration took place in just five to six generations, and led to peoples from Finland, in the west to Thailand, in the east employing the same metalworking technology, and, in some areas, horse breeding and riding. It is further conjectured that the same migration spread the Uralic group of languages across Europe and Asia. Some 39 languages of this group are still extant, including Hungarian, Finnish, Estonian, and Lapish. However, recent genetic testings of sites in South Siberia and Kazakhstan, and Renovo Horizon, would rather support a spreading of the bronze technology via Indo-European migrations eastwards, as this technology was well known for quite a while in western regions. East Asia East Asia Timeline Dates are approximate, consult particular article for details. China Chinese Bronze Age a Shang Dynasty II handled bronze Jeff Udingui, 1600-1046 BC. Spring and Autumn Period Piyu Bronze Vessel with Interlaced Dragon Design, 722-481 BC. Historians disagree about the dates of the Bronze Age in China. The difficulty lies in the term Bronze Age as it has been applied to signify a period in history when bronze tools replaced stone tools and, later, were themselves replaced by iron ones. The medium of the new age made that of the old obsolete. In China, however, any attempt to establish a definite set of dates for a Bronze Age is complicated by two factors. 1. Arrival of iron smelting technology, and 2. Persistence of bronze objects. The earliest bronze artifacts have been found in the Mujiayao culture site, between 3100 and 2700 BC, and from then on, the society gradually grew into the Bronze Age. Bronze metallurgy in China originated in what is referred to as the early Two Wei Giles, early U period, which some historians argue places it within the range of dates controlled by the Shang Dynasty. Others believe the early two sites belong to the preceding Xia, Wei Giles, Xia, dynasty. The U.S. National Gallery of Art defines the Chinese Bronze Age as the period between about 2000 BC and 771 BC, a period that begins with early two culture and ends abruptly with the disintegration of Western Zhu rule. Though this provides a concise frame of reference, it overlooks the continued importance of bronze in Chinese metallurgy and culture. 
Since this is significantly later than the discovery of bronze in Mesopotamia, bronze technology could have been imported rather than discovered independently in China. While there may be reason to believe that bronze work developed inside China separately from outside influence, the discovery of European mummies in Xinjiang suggests a possible route of transmission from the West. The Shang Dynasty of the Yellow River Valley rose to power after the Zia Dynasty. While some direct information about the Shang Dynasty comes from Shang era inscriptions on bronze artifacts, most comes from oracle bones, turtle shells, cattle scapulae, or other bones which bear glyphs that form the first significant corpus of recorded Chinese characters. Iron is found from the Zhou Dynasty, but its use is minimal. Chinese literature dating to the 6th century BC attests a knowledge of iron smelting. Yet bronze continues to occupy the seat of significance in the archaeological and historical record for some time after this. Historian W.C. White argues that iron did not supplant bronze at any period before the end of the Zhou Dynasty, 256 BC, and that bronze vessels make up the majority of metal vessels all the way through the later Han period, or to 221 BC. It is unclear what White referred to. The former Han Dynasty was 206 to 25 BCE, the later Han Dynasty ended 220 CE. On iron, readers may prefer to refer to this newer book, Wagner, Donald B. Iron, and Steel in Ancient China. Leiden, Netherlands, New York, E.J. Brill, 1993 period. The Chinese bronze artifacts generally are either utilitarian, like spear points or adze heads, or ritual bronzes which are more elaborate versions and precious materials of everyday vessels, as well as tools and weapons. Examples are the numerous large sacrificial tripods known as stings in Chinese, there are many other distinct shapes. Surviving identified Chinese ritual bronzes tend to be highly decorated, often with the Tao Te motif, which involves highly stylized animal face, s, these appear in three main motif types, those of demons, of symbolic animals, and of abstract symbols. Many large bronzes also bear cast inscriptions that are the great bulk of the surviving body of early Chinese writing and have helped historians and archaeologists piece together the history of China, especially during the Zhou Dynasty, 1046 to 256 BC. The bronzes of the Western Zhou Dynasty document large portions of history not found in the extant texts that were often composed by persons of varying rank and possibly even social class. Further, the medium of cast bronze lends the record they preserve a permanence not enjoyed by manuscripts. These inscriptions can commonly be subdivided into four parts, a reference to the date and place, the naming of the event commemorated, the list of gifts given to the artisan in exchange for the bronze, and a dedication. The relative points of reference these vessels provide have enabled historians to place most of the vessels within a certain time frame of the Western Zoo period, allowing them to trace the evolution of the vessels and the events they record. Korea Korean Bronze Age Bronze Artifacts from Daegokri, Hwasan, Korea The beginning of the Bronze Age on the peninsula is around 900 BC, 800 BC. Although the Korean Bronze Age culture derives from the Liaoning and Manchuria, it exhibits unique typology and styles, especially in ritual objects. The Mumun Pottery Period is named after the Korean name for undecorated or plain cooking and storage vessels that form a large part of the pottery assemblage over the entire length of the period, but especially 850 to 550 BC. The Mumun Period is known for the origins of intensive agriculture and complex societies in both the Korean Peninsula and the Japanese archipelago. The Middle Mumun Pottery Period culture of the Southern Korean Peninsula gradually adopted bronze production, c. 700-600 BC, after a period when Liaoning-style bronze daggers and other bronze artifacts were exchanged as far as the interior part of the Southern Peninsula, c. 900-700 BC. The bronze daggers lent prestige and authority to the personages who wielded and were buried with them in high-status megalithic burials at south coastal centers such as the Agoidmadong site. Bronze was an important element in ceremonies, and as for mortuary offerings, until 100.
See also, Liaoning Bronze Agriculture. South Asia. South Asia Timeline. Dates are approximate, consult particular article for details. Indus Valley. Indus Valley Civilization. The Bronze Age on the Indian subcontinent began around 3300 BC with the beginning of the Indus Valley Civilization. Inhabitants of the Indus Valley, the Harappans, developed new techniques in metallurgy and produced copper, bronze, lead, and tin. The Indian Bronze Age was followed by the Iron Age Vedic period. The Harappan culture, which dates from 1700 BC to 1300 BC, overlapped the transition from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age, thus it is difficult to date this transition accurately. Southeast Asia Dating back to the Neolithic Age, the first bronze drums, called the Dong Sun drums, have been uncovered in and around the Red River Delta regions of Vietnam and southern China. These relate to the prehistoric Dong Sun culture of Vietnam. In Ban Chang, Thailand, Southeast Asia, bronze artifacts have been discovered dating to 2100 BC. However, according to the radiocarbon dating on the human and big bones in Ban Chang, some scholars propose that the initial Bronze Age in Ban Chang was in late second millennium. In Nyangon, Burma, bronze tools have been excavated along with ceramics and stone artifacts. Dating is still currently broad, 3500-500 BC. Ban Nan Wat, excavated by Charles Higgum, was a rich site with over 640 graves excavated that gleaned many complex bronze items that may have had social value connected to them. Ban Chang, however, is the most thoroughly documented site, while having the clearest evidence of metallurgy when it comes to Southeast Asia. With a rough date range of late 3rd millennium BC to the 1st millennium AD, the site alone has various artifacts such as burial pottery, dating from 2100 BC, 1700 BC, fragments of bronze, copper base bangles, and much more. What's interesting about this site, however, isn't just the old age of the artifacts, but the fact that this technology suggested on-site casting from the very beginning. The on-site casting supports the theory that bronze was first introduced in Southeast Asia as fully developed which therefore shows that bronze was actually innovated from a different country. Some scholars believe that the copper base metallurgy was disseminated from northwest and central China via south and southwest areas such as Guangdong province and Yunnan province and finally into Southeast Asia around 1000 BC. Archaeological research in northern Vietnam indicates an increase in rates of infectious disease following the advent of metallurgy, skeletal fragments and sites dating to the early and mid-Bronze Age evidence a greater proportion of lesions than in sites of earlier periods. There are a few possible implications of this. One is the increased contact with bacterial and slash or fungal pathogens due to increased population density and land clearing slash cultivation. The other one is decreased levels of immunocompetence in the metal age due to changes in diet caused by agriculture. The last is that there may have been an emergence of infectious disease in the Dabat period that evolved into a more virulent form in the metal period. Archaeology also suggests that Bronze Age metallurgy may not have been as significant a catalyst in social stratification and warfare in Southeast Asia as in other regions social distribution shifting away from chiefdom states to a hierarchical network. Data analyzes of sites such as Ban Lum Kao, Ban Na Dai, Na Nok Thae, Kok Fe Nam Dai, and Nong Nor have consistently led researchers to conclude that there was no full entrenched hierarchy. Europe Bronze Age in Europe European Timeline A few examples of named Bronze Age cultures in Europe in roughly relative order. Dates are approximate, consult particular article for details. The chosen cultures overlapped in time and the indicated periods do not fully correspond to their estimated extents. Aegean Aegean Bronze Age Bronze Age copper ingot found in Crete Aegean Civilization the Aegean Bronze Age began around 3200 BC, when civilizations first established a far-ranging trade network. 
this network and poured a tin and charcoal to Cyprus where copper was mined and alloyed with the tin to produce bronze. Bronze objects were then exported far and wide and supported the trade. Isotopic analysis of and in some Mediterranean bronze artifacts points to the fact that they may have originated from Great Britain. Knowledge of navigation was well developed at this time and reached a peak of skill not exceeded, except perhaps by Polynesian sailors, until 1730 when the invention of the chronometer enabled the precise determination of longitude. The Minoan civilization based in Knossos appears to have coordinated and defended its Bronze Age trade. Illyrians are also believed to have roots in the early Bronze Age. Ancient empires valued luxury goods in contrast to staple foods, leading to famine. Aegean Collapse Bronze Age Collapse Bronze Age Collapse theories have described aspects of the end of the age in this region. At the end of the Bronze Age, in the Aegean region, the Mycenaean administration of the regional trade empire followed the decline of Minoan primacy. Several Minoan client states lost much of their population to famine and slash or pestilence. This would indicate that the trade network may have failed, preventing the trade that would previously have relieved such famines and prevented illness caused by malnutrition. It is also known that in the Syria the breadbasket of the Minoan Empire, the area north of the Black Sea, also suddenly lost much of its population and thus probably some cultivation. The Aegean collapse has been attributed to the exhaustion of the Cyprus forest causing the end of the bronze trade. These forests are known to have existed into later times, and experiments have shown that charcoal production on the scale necessary for the bronze production of the late Bronze Age would have exhausted them in less than 50 years. Aegean collapse has also been attributed to the fact that as iron tools became more common, the main justification for the thin trade ended, and that trade network ceased to function as it did formerly. The colonies of the Minoan Empire then suffered drought, famine, war, or some combination of those three, and had no access to the distant resources of an empire by which they could easily recover. The Terra eruption occurred around the Aegean Collapse, 110 kilometers, 68 miles, north of Crete. Speculation included tsunami from Terra, more commonly known today as Santorini, destroyed Cretan cities. A tsunami may have destroyed the Cretan navy and its home harbor, which then lost crucial naval battles, so that in the LMIB slash LMII event, c. 1450 BC, the cities of Crete burned, and the Mycenaean civilization took over Knossos. If the eruption occurred in the late 17th century BC, as most chronologists now think, then its immediate effects belong to the Middle to Late Bronze Age transition, and not to the end of the Late Bronze Age, but it could have triggered the instability that led to the collapse first of Gnosis and then of Bronze Age society overall. One such theory looks to the role of Cretan expertise in administering the empire post Hera. If this expertise was concentrated in Crete, then the Mycenaeans may have made political and commercial mistakes in administering the Cretan Empire. Archaeological findings, including some on the island of Dara, suggest that the center of Minoan civilization at the time of the eruption was actually on Terra rather than on Crete. According to this theory, the catastrophic loss of the political, administrative and economic center by the eruption as well as the damage wrought by the tsunami to the coastal towns and villages of Crete precipitated the decline of the Minoans. The weakened political entity with a reduced economic and military capability and fabled riches would have then been more vulnerable to human predators. Indeed, the Santorini eruption is usually dated to c. 1630 BC, while the Mycenaean Greeks first enter the historical record a few decades later, c. 1600 BC. Thus, the later Mycenaean assaults on Crete, c.1450 BC, and Troy, c.1250 BC, are revealed as mere continuations of the steady encroachments of the Greeks upon the weakened Minoan world. Central Europe See also, Bronze Age in Southeastern Europe and Bronze Age in Romania Central European Bronze Age Geniavis Cup Grenoble Cuirass Mycenaean sword found in Romania. Bronze Age weaponry and ornaments. In Central Europe, the early Bronze Age Untice culture, 
1800-1600 BC, includes numerous smaller groups, like the Straubing, Adlerberg, and Hatvan cultures. Some very rich burials, such as the one located at Lubingen, with grave gifts crafted from gold, point to an increase of social stratification already present in the Untice culture. All in all, cemeteries of this period are rare and of small size. The Untice culture is followed by the Middle Bronze Age, 1600-1200 BC, tumulus culture, which is characterized by inhumation burials in tumuli, barrows. In the eastern Hungarian Koros tributaries, the early Bronze Age first saw the introduction of the Mako culture, followed by the Ottomani and Giolavarsan cultures. The late Bronze Age urn field culture, 1300-700 BC, is characterized by cremation burials. It includes the Lusatian culture in eastern Germany and Poland, 1300-500 BC, that continues into the Iron Age. The Central European Bronze Age is followed by the Iron Age Hallstatt culture, 700-450 BC. Important sites include Biskupen, Poland Nabra, Germany Vrabel, Slovakia Zugsumpf, Zug, Switzerland The Bronze Age in Central Europe has been described in the chronological scheme of German prehistorian Paul Reinecke. He described Bronze A1, BZA1, period, 2300-2000 BC triangular daggers, flat axes, stone wrist guards, flint arrowheads, and Bronze A2, BZA2, period, 1950-1700 BC daggers with metal hilt, flanged axes, halberds, pins with perforated spherical heads, solid bracelets, and phases Hallstatt A and B, High A and B. South Europe the Apennine culture, also called the Elian Bronze Age, is a technology complex of central and southern Italy spanning the Chalcolithic and Bronze Age proper. The Camuni were an ancient people of uncertain origin, according to Pliny the Elder, they were Oiganae, according to Strabo, they were Rhetians who lived in Valcomonica in what is now northern Lombardy. During the Iron Age, although human groups of hunters, shepherds, and farmers are known to have lived in the area since the Neolithic. Located in Sardinia and Corsica, the Neuragic civilization lasted from the early Bronze Age, 18th century BC, to the 2nd century AD, when the islands were already Romanized. They take their name from the characteristic new Ragic towers, which evolved from the pre existing megalithic culture, which built dolmens and menhirs. The Nurag Towers are unanimously considered the best preserved and largest megalithic remains in Europe. Their effective use is still debated, some scholars considered them as monumental tombs, others as houses of the giants, others as fortresses, ovens for metal fusion, prisons, or, finally, temples for a solar cult. Around the end of the 3rd millennium BC, Sardinia exported towards Sicilia culture that built small dolmens, trilithic or polygonal shaped, that served as tombs, as it has been ascertained in the Sicilian dolmen of Cava Dei Servi. From this region they reached Malta Island, and other countries of Mediterranean Basin. The Terramare was an early Indo-European civilization, in the area of what is now Pianura Padana, northern Italy, before the arrival of the Celts, and in other parts of Europe. They lived in square villages of wood and stilt houses. These villages were built on land, but generally near a stream, with roads that crossed each other at right angles. The whole complex denoted the nature of a fortified settlement. Terramer were widespread in the Pianura Padana, especially along the Panaro River, between Modena and Bologna, and in the rest of Europe. The civilization developed in the Middle and Late Bronze Age, between the 17th and the 13th centuries BC. The Castellari culture developed in Istria, during the Middle Bronze Age. It lasted for more than a millennium, from the 15th century BC, until the Roman conquest, in the 3rd century BC. It takes its name from the fortified boroughs, Castellari, Friuli and Gesteller, that characterize the culture. The Cane Great culture developed from the Mid-Bronze Age, 13th century BC, till the Iron Age, in the Pianura Padana, in what are now western Lombardy, eastern Piedmont, and Ticino. 
It takes its name from the township of Canegrate, where, in the 20th century, some 50 tombs with ceramics and metal objects were found. The Cane Great culture migrated from the northwest part of the Alps and descended to Pianura Padana from the Swiss Alps passes and the Ticino. The Gola Seca culture developed starting from the Late Bronze Age in the Po Plain. It takes its name from Gola Seca, a locality next to the Ticino, where, in the early 19th century, Abbot Giovanni Battista Gianni excavated its first findings, some 50 tombs with ceramics and metal objects. Remains of the Gola Seca culture span an area of c. 20,000 square kilometers south to the Alps, between the Po, Sesia, and Sirio rivers, dating from the 9th to the 4th century BC. West Europe Atlantic Bronze Age Atlantic Bronze Age Ceremonial Giant Turk, 1500-1300 BC Golden Helmet, Laro, Galicia the Atlantic Bronze Age is a cultural complex of the period of approximately 1300-700 BC that includes different cultures in Portugal, Andalusia, Galicia, and the British Isles. It is marked by economic and cultural exchange. Commercial contacts extend to Denmark and the Mediterranean. The Atlantic Bronze Age was defined by a number of distinct regional centers of metal production, unified by a regular maritime exchange of some of their products. Great Britain In Great Britain, the Bronze Age is considered to have been the period from around 2100 to 750 BC. Migration brought new people to the islands from the continent. Recent tooth enamel isotope research on bodies found in early Bronze Age graves around Stonehenge indicate that at least some of the migrants came from the area of modern Switzerland. The Beaker culture displayed different behaviors from the earlier Neolithic people, and cultural change was significant. Integration is thought to have been peaceful, as many of the early Henge sites were seemingly adopted by the newcomers. The rich Wessex culture developed in southern Britain at this time. Additionally, the climate was deteriorating, where once the weather was warm and dry it became much wetter, as the Bronze Age continued, forcing the population away from easily defended sites, in the hills, and into the fertile valleys. Large livestock farms developed in the lowlands, and appear to have contributed to economic growth, and inspired increasing forest clearances. The Devira Rimbari culture began to emerge in the second half of the Middle Bronze Age, c. 1400-1100 BC, to exploit these conditions. Devon and Cornwall were major sources of and for much of Western Europe and copper was extracted from sites such as the Great Ore Mine in Northern Wales. Social groups appear to have been tribal, but with growing complexity and hierarchies becoming apparent. Burial of Dead which, until this period, had usually been communal, became more individual. For example, whereas in the Neolithic a large chambered cairn, or long barrow housed the dead, early Bronze Age people buried their dead in individual barrows, also commonly known and marked on modern British Ordnance Survey maps, as tumuli, or sometimes in cis covered with cairns. The greatest quantities of bronze objects in England were discovered in East Cambridgeshire, where the most important finds were recovered in Islam, more than 6,500 pieces. Alloying of copper with zinc ore to make brass or bronze was practiced soon after the discovery of copper itself. One copper mine at Great Orm in North Wales extended to a depth of 70 meters. At Alderley Edge in Cheshire. Carbon dates have established mining at around 2280-1890 BC, at 95% probability. The earliest identified metalworking site, Sigwells, Somerset, is much later, dated by globular urn-style pottery to approximately the 12th century BC. The identifiable sherds from over 500 mold fragments included a perfect fit of the hilt of a sword in the Wilburton style held in Somerset County Museum. Ireland. The Bronze Age in Ireland commenced around 2000 BC, when copper was alloyed with tin and used to manufacture ballybeg type flat axes and associated metalwork. The preceding period is known as the Copper Age and is characterized by the production of flat axes, daggers, halberds, and awls in copper. The period is divided into three phases 
Early Bronze Age, 2500 BC, Middle Bronze Age, 1500-1200 BC, and Late Bronze Age, 1200-500 c BC. Ireland is also known for a relatively large number of Early Bronze Age burials. One of the characteristic types of artifact of the Early Bronze Age in Ireland is the flat axe. There are five main types of flat axes, Low Reville, C2200 BC, Ballybeg, C2000 BC, Kilaha, C2000 BC, Bally Valley, C2600 BC, Derrynagan, C1600 BC, and a number of metal ingots in the shape of axes. North Europe Assorted Celtic bronze castings dating from the Bronze Age the Bronze Age in Northern Europe spans the entire second millennium BC, Untice culture, Urnfield culture, Tumulus culture, Terramare culture, Lusatian culture, lasting until CA 600 BC. The Northern Bronze Age was both a period and a Bronze Age culture in Scandinavian prehistory, C 1700 to 500 BC, with sites that reached as far east as Estonia. Succeeding the late Neolithic culture, its ethnic and linguistic affinities are unknown in the absence of written sources. It is followed by the pre-Roman Iron Age. Even though Northern European Bronze Age cultures were relatively late and came in existence via trade, sites present rich and well-preserved objects made of wool, wood, and imported Central European bronze and gold. Many rock carvings depict ships and the large stone burial monuments known as stone ships suggest that shipping played an important role. Thousands of rock carvings depict ships, most probably representing stone plank built canoes for warfare, fishing and trade. These may have a history as far back as the Neolithic period and continue into the pre-Roman Iron Age as shown by the Hjort Spring Boat. There are many mounds and rock carving sites from the period. Numerous artifacts of bronze and gold are found. No written language existed in the Nordic countries during the Bronze Age. The rock carvings have been dated through comparison with depicted artifacts. Caucasus Arsenical bronze artifacts of the Maykop culture in the North Caucasus have been dated around the 4th millennium BC. This innovation resulted in the circulation of arsenical bronze technology over southern and eastern Europe. Pontic Caspian Steppe The Ayamna culture is a late Copper Age slash Early Bronze Age culture of the southern Bug slash Dniester slash Ural region, the Pontic Steppe, dating to the 36th 23rd centuries BC. The name also appears in English as Pic Grave Culture or Ogre Grave Culture. The Catacomb Culture, ca 2800 2200 BC, refers to an early Bronze Age culture occupying essentially what is present day Ukraine. It seemed more of as an aerial term to cover several smaller related archaeological cultures. The Srubna culture was a late Bronze Age, 18th 12th centuries BC, culture. It is a successor to the Yamna culture, the Pit Grave culture, and the Poltavka culture. Americas The Moch civilization of South America independently discovered and developed bronze smelting. Bronze technology was developed further by the Incas and used widely both for utilitarian objects and sculpture. Later appearance of limited bronze smelting in West Mexico, see metallurgy in pre-Columbian Mesoamerica, suggests either contact of that region with Andean cultures or separate discovery of the technology. Outside the Bronze Age Japan. The Jamon period lasted until 300 BCE, and, towards the end of the period, the Japanese archipelago experienced the introduction of bronze and iron simultaneously. Bronze and iron smelting techniques spread to the Japanese archipelago through immigration and trade, from the Korean Peninsula and the Chinese mainland. Iron was mainly used for agricultural and other tools, whereas ritual and ceremonial artifacts were mainly made of bronze. Formerly, scholarly theory suggested that a bronze and iron using Yamato people gradually spread across the Japanese archipelago, conquering and assimilating the Jamon people and their descendants, as well as pushing them east and north. Current archaeology suggests a more complex picture of the Jamon Yayoi transition, including as regards ethnic categories. See the article on Yayoi people. Africa. 
Although North Africa was influenced to a certain extent by European Bronze Age cultures, for example, traces of the Belbeker tradition are found in Morocco, it has long been believed that Africa did not have its own metallurgy traditions until the Phoenician colonization, ca. 1100 BC, of North Africa, and that it remained attached to the Neolithic way of life. The civilization of ancient Egypt, whose influence did not extensively cover Africa outside of the Nile's reach, was believed to be the sole exception to this rule as regards the whole range of ancient cultures of Africa. Recently, however, some discoveries have been made that appear to contradict these views. In the Termit region of eastern Niger, its ancient inhabitants are now thought to have become the first iron-smelting people in West Africa, and among the first in the world at around 1500 BC. Iron and copper working then continued to spread southward to Nigeria, and then moved elsewhere in the continent, reaching South Africa around Ad 200. The widespread use of iron revolutionized the Bantu-speaking farming communities, who adopted it driving out and absorbing the rock tool using hunter-gatherer societies they encountered as they expanded to farm wider areas of savanna. The technologically superior Bantu speakers spread across southern Africa and became wealthy and powerful, producing iron for tools and weapons in large, industrial quantities.